What's up, YouTube? This is Boston X 89 Guys, my Pendulum Week is swinging forward, and today we are looking at my updated Amorphage deck for the May 2020 format. For those of you who are not familiar with the Amorphage, this archetype came out in the Shining Big 3 set. That booster set had all the cool new Blue Eye support as well as Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon in it. What this archetype does is a control Pendulum deck. The Pendulum scale effects allow you to have the ability to control what your opponent can and cannot do during the course of the game. It is insanely fun, especially when you start getting the monsters on the field. The monsters also have the ability to lock your opponent out of their extra deck. So, literally, you are forcing them not to play. And with the right combination of scale monsters, you can pretty much shut down entire decks in this meta. We'll discuss that as we go along. I can tell you this right now. Your opponent will not see this deck coming, and it can take a lot of people by surprise. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this deck. Monsters first, as always. Two copies of a Morphage Glidany. Alright, a few things that I'm going to turn around and point out. The... A Morphage Pendulum scale effects need a face-up Morphage monster on the field in order to remain active. Also, during the standby phase, you have to tribute any monster you control off the field in order to maintain it. So that's you have a maintenance cost during your standby phase you have to pay. That being said, you can pay you can tribute off any monster you control. It doesn't really have to be an Amorphage monster. The best case scenario for maintaining the scales, if you have one Morphage monster in your pendulum scales, you should be having at least two monsters on board, one a morphage to keep the effect active as and one other monster to tribute off during the standby phase to maintain the cost. If you have two morphage monsters in your scales, you're looking to have three monsters, one to keep the effects active and the other two to tribute off for the maintenance. That being said, all the morphage monsters, well specifically the lower level ones, the level twos and the level fours, they have the ability to lock your opponent out of the extra deck, but they have to be Pendulum Summoned or Flip Summoned in order for that effect to be, become active. The higher level ones, the level 6 and level 8, don't really need to be Pendulum Summoned or Flip Summoned. You, all you have to do is just summon them out onto the field and they can lock your opponent out of their extra deck regardless. Okay? For Gluttony, Gluttony's scale effect basically says you cannot activate monster effects. This is an amazing sick effect that can basically lock your opponent out of accessing a lot of the resources in their decks since a lot of decks are more monster effect driven these days. This is one card you might want to consider playing up to maybe three, but I feel that because this is these monsters land outside of the scale, since the scale is three and five and you can only pin them someone out four, it's better off to keep the monst these monsters at a m smaller ratios. So two is really all you really need here. The other level two monster you have in this deck is going to be a Morphate Luxury. And this card shuts off all of your opponent's spell cards. Can't activate spells, can't activate mon monster effects. You get the idea. You're just locking your opponent out of the, of the ability to do different things. Depending on what scales you could have on the field, and yes, you are allowed to have two monsters with the same scale, so you can actually have both Gluttony and Lechery on the field at once. Moving forward, you have two copies of Amorphage Greed. Amorphage Greed's pendulum scale effect states you can't activate trap effects. Just imagine this card and Gluttony on, as your scales against Elglitch. Yeah, you're starting to see that this can be extremely poisonous to that deck and shut them out of playing anything. So, yes. Very, very good. I do include one copy of Morphage Envy. Envy, we're not really looking for its scale effect. It's more or less another level 4 to be able to help special summon out other level 4s out of your deck with the use of a particular spell card in my deck, which we'll get to a little bit later. Its scale effect does prevent both players from being able to chain card effects to other car cards. So, in reality, you can have this card in your scale, activate a search effect, and potentially be able to block your opponent from chaining Ash Blossom or other hand traps 
to that search effect, allowing your search to go off. So it does have some uses, but one's really, really neat. Three copies of Amorphous Pride. And the primary reason why I'm running three cards is because it's the strongest of the level fours at 1,750 attack points. Its pendulum scale effect prevents you from being hit with burn damage. So this is not bad. Um, in more rogue matches, you have you might have to worry about it a little bit more. But still, yeah. It's more of a body to get you started on board, and with the way this deck can really boost its monsters up, definitely something that you want to be putting up on board fast. Okay, next I am having one copy of a Morphe Sloth. I'm only really one running one copy of Sloth because Gluttony and Lechery really do a better job at stopping the surge effects because they're either coming off of monsters or spells. And by st stopping all spells and all monster effects, you really don't need uh, kind of a redundant effect like Sloth in the deck. The only reason why I'm keeping him in the deck is because he is a level 6 and he's more or less easier to tribute summon onto the field. Tribute summoning in this deck can allow you to be able to pl plus off your summons by searching your deck for other Amorphage cards. And I can tell you right now... Having a bigger body on the board can definitely be able to help you get sh through your opponent's monsters. Last but not least, of the Morphages, we're running two copies of a Morphage Goliath. This is the card I strongly suggest you run at multiple copies, primarily because its effect states that any card your opponent sends to the graveyard is being banished and said. So it's a one sided macrocosmos, and combined with some of the other cards in this deck, it can be really punishing just by denying your opponent their resources. Definitely an amazing card. It is a two tribute card, but there are ways to get it out on the field without tributing it. And if you can power boost it off of this base 2750, yeah, it's gonna get big real fast. So, moving forward, some support cards for this deck. We have three copies of Magical Abductor. Abductor, we're probably running her for her scale effect. Basically, whenever a a spell card is activated, doesn't matter which player is activating it, it gains a spell counter. And then during your turn, you can remove three spell counters from this card and search your deck for any pendulum monster to add to your hand. So it's actually a very awesome card to really help your deck get started, get you to write cards in hand, and set up the right scales. Monster Effect also plays around with spell counters. Every spell counter, it powers boosts itself by 100 attack, so it can get pretty big as well, so not a bad idea. You're not going to be using its search because we don't want any level 1 uh, spellcaster monsters in this deck. For some spicy monsters in this deck, I am running Arya the Wicked Warden. Arya basically is in this deck to help you fetch your Lair of Darkness. Lair of Darkness is an amazing card. Helps off with the tribute factor for various card effects like a Morphage Infection or even taking your opponent's monsters off the board to help break their boards can be very, very useful. On the plus side, you can tribute off any darker tribute monster you control, draw a card so additional drawers are always welcome. And I can tell you right now, definitely a nasty, powerful card. And speaking of powerful cards, we have two copies of Lilith. Lilith basically has a quick effect where you can tribute off any Dark Retrieving monster on the board. And you get to reveal up to three normal traps from your deck. Your opponent picks one, sets it to your field, the other two are shuffled back into your deck. You get the idea. It allows you to get your traps on board, so you can literally be able to play your back row and Further break your bo opponent's board as well, so always, always good. Two copies of a Morphage, in or three copies of a Morphage Infection, excuse me. A Morphage Infection, while it's face up on the field, power boosts your or Morphage monsters for 100 attack point or defense points for every other Morphage card on the field. So basically, if you have Infection, the two scales, and three monsters, each monster gains 600 attack and defense, which is actually pretty beefy, um, especially when you start seeing a lot of the monsters getting up above 2,000. 
Also, anytime one of your Amorphi monsters is tributed or destroyed by battle, you're getting to search your deck for another Amorphi's card to add to your hand. You can only utilize that effect once per turn, but it's so worth it because the consistency of this deck really gets a massive boost out of this card. Three copies of Lair. Now, Lair turns all monsters on the field into dark attribute monsters, which is a little bit easier to utilize some of the trap cards with. That being said, it allows you to utilize any monsters on the field, whether it be your own or your opponents, as tributes for monster effects. And only monster effects, you can't utilize the, your opponent's monsters for costs, like maintaining your, your Omorphe scales or tribute summons like that. It's only for card effects. I know, it kind of sucks in that regards, but I, I get the reason why they wanted to restrict it that well. You just don't want to be tripping off your opponent's monsters willy-nilly that easy. It makes it too much of a powerful card. Really awesome thing, it generates tokens depending on who t whose turn it is. That player gets the tokens, but still, those tokens can be utilized for tribute summoning or maintaining costs for your scales. So definitely something that you want to be keeping in. And I can tell you this right now, tributing off your opponent's monster and giving them tokens, the tokens are a lot more easier to get over than the other monsters, so yeah. Definitely worth having in this deck. Two copies of Pendulum Paradox. What happens is that as long as you have two monsters with the same scale and different names, you can get them back into your hand. Best case scenario is to basically utilize this card to get back Gluttony, Greed, Sloth, or Goliath out of your extra deck and back into your hand so you can either set them on the, into your scales or tribute some of them out onto the board to get them going. So, two copies. And of course, this deck really doesn't extend all that often into the extra deck. I don't like useless cards in my extra deck if you've seen my channel before, but three copies of Pot of Extravagance just to allow you additional draws. Always, always great. And to help get things started up quickly in this deck, we're running three copies of Ties of the Brethren. This is an amazing card in this deck. Basically, as long as you have your base of a Morphage monster on the board, you can activate this card and special summon two other monsters of the same level of tribute and type to get them on the board. This is really a great combo starter. Downside is, is that you can can't special summon for the rest of the turn after you activate the card, but still, you're getting your bodies on the board and you're getting your board set up. So if you could go full scale, hey, you got something here that can basically lock your opponent out of a lot of different things and be able to set up a situation where they might not be able to play and have to scoop. One of the cool things about this deck is that this deck can really utilize the virus traps very well me i like full force virus or grinning gray virus full force virus allows you to tribute up a monster a darker tribute monster with 2000 or more attack points and it's pretty easy with infection as well as a few other cards that can power boost your monsters defenses points up above 2000 so you can so you have that ability to tribute off those monsters and destroy any monsters your opponent controls with 1500 or less attack uh, or defense excuse me pretty nasty grinning grave virus also does a very good job distributing off a darker tribute monster to basically destroy all monsters your opponent controls I, I think up from the hand or, or from the hand or the deck, not the, the control, but and you destroy a number of monsters up to the attack points based on the how many 500s there are. I don't know, I'd probably describe that card pretty bad, but still, it's worth both of these cards are worth it, especially when you're utilizing these cards in concert with Goliath. Banishing your opponent's resources just can really help you lock down duels, and these cards last effects last for three turns so yeah you're gonna be seeing your opponent draws you're gonna be knowing what they have in their hands and you could be able to play around them so definitely worth having in this deck and the last card just for a little bit extra consistency boosts dark spirit or greed allows you to tribute off any dark attribute monster draw two cards very awesome card indeed to have see more cards be able to do more things and respond to more plays 
that's it for the main deck, extra deck. Like I said before, I don't like useless cards in my extra deck. I try to at least make them somewhat useful. One copy of Erratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. Awesome card. You can contribute off and a Dragon Type Monster to be able to bounce one card off your opponent's field, which is actually pretty awesome. It plays in well with a Morphage Infection. You can contribute it itself off the field, you could actually get a, a Dragon Type Monster out of your deck onto the, on the board. Alright, yes, the monster's going to be attacking, defense is going to be bottom out to zero, but still, you can potentially get Goliath on the board, defense position, and it's going to lock out your opponent's extra deck, so, not a bad thing. Two copies of We Witch Apprentice, primarily because we have Lair of Darkness, it power boosts all your monsters by 500 attack and defense, so, Definitely worthwhile to have in this deck. You can also recycle your Arimas and Lilith's back to hand if they're, in case they're popped. So, two copies of IP Masquerina. Just an all around great generic link, too. Gives you the zones for pendulum something out of your extra deck. Also allows you to link summon during your opponent's turn. Being able to bring out some other monsters that can be. Are, become immune to the effects of your opponent's cards, which is actually pretty good. One copy of Phoenix, one copy of Unicorn, go off the back row, in case you need to go off the back row, go off, spin off any card from your opponent's field back into their deck, so definitely worth having both of those cards in this. And of course, I do run Link 4s, Boroso Dragon and Saruja. Boroso Dragon is pretty self explanatory OTK machine. Saruja, we're really looking to build into the three name effect, primarily because that additional extra special summon does help get other cards out of your hand onto the field without having to turn around pendulum summon them out. I'm talking specifically about the higher level Goliath. Definitely worth the way of getting that card on the field. Also, power boost any monster it points to, and it gives you three zones to pendulum summon to. So, always want to have that style of arrows on the field for you. Do we can go into uh, rank fours, a bistroller to lock down graveyards. Running a utopia package just to be able to swing over your opponent's cards. Babuska for stall. Number 60, the Gratis, the Timeless. Extra draws. Getting a monster out of your graveyard back onto the field. Or even power buffing one of your monsters so you can swing big. So, definitely yes. And last but not least, I'm running number 101, Silent Honor Arc. Primarily because it can steal a face-up attack position monster and equip it to itself as an overlay unit. Guys, that is it for my Morphage deck for May 2020. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this on my channel, make sure to subscribe, enable notifications so you don't miss a single upload. Check out the description box below. Find the links for my affiliates, both TCG Player and SideDeckVersus.com. Both are great resources for any Yu-Gi-Oh! player. Also, find the invite link to my Discord server. Join the conversation. We'd love to have you follow me on social media, Twitter, and Reddit. And guys, until next time, as always, peace!